Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, a Canadian company makes lemonade out of stupid knife laws. I add the artisan serious to my collection and favorite folders from favorite brands. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the Knife Junkie Podcast with uh, Midweek Supplemental. It's good to have you back. My favorite comment from this past week was on a video I posted this past weekend on Saturday, uh, where I took a bunch of Wingard wearables, uh, three of those tomahawks, and, uh, well, finally dispatched an old watermelon that's been sitting around. All ooze aside, the family that slays outdated melons together stays together. By Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf, uh, truer words have never been said, and that is a, that's a very old saying, you know. Uh, it's a it's a commonly known branch off of the family that prays together stays together. So I'm glad you recognize that it's it's much less recognized than it's a more popular cousin. But I like this saying better. So thank you. Lo <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Lone Wolf. And thank you all for watching this past week. Let's get on to a pocket check. Today, I was carrying something that was my absolute favorite knife for a while when I had it, uh, when I first got it, and I haven't carried it in quite a while. But this is a, a hard-use knife that I actually have put to hard use. This is, this is one expensive knife of mine that I've actually used in a hard-use way, and this got all sorts of carpet cutting uh, done a few years back when we redid my wife's office. Okay, so this is the Zero Tolerance 0630 designed by Ernest Emerson, as if you couldn't tell. Uh, this was the second in their line of collaborations. He did the 0620, the 0630 here, and then the 0640, which has by far been the most popular, uh, based on, uh, what, what were those knives called now? Uh, from the Specwar series. Um, and really great knife that one is, uh, but this one is great too. And uh, when this came out, a lot of people claimed that the zero tolerance Emerson knives were better than Emerson knives. And one could argue that, uh, but Emerson knives themselves are an acquired taste and a very particular thing uh, with the break in period and with the feel. And they're, they're, they have two different feels across time. You know, before 2016, it was a double detent system. And then after they went to a single detent and both have um, their own unique feels. And I like them both. Uh, so uh, Emerson is a, a complex and acquired taste, whereas Zero Tolerance, um, you know, if the design is good, they're going to put the thing together just how you like it. So this is a titanium frame lock S35VN. That blade is based on the uh, Tiger. No, no, no. Yeah, the Tiger and the CQC8. It's kind of like a fat CQC8 uh, which is basically what the Tiger Blade is. Uh, so really nice. I love the handle shape. And this is, uh, it, it did come with very uh, vanilla black G10 scales with some really generic milling in it. And, um, you know, it's fine. It works fine. And it uh, belied its working nature. But I got a, a more uh, uh, suitable scale. I got this linen micarta scale it's an olive green linen micarta scale does great for grippage and for looks and this one has taken on the patina well so did not cut carpet with this today but it, i have in the past and i can attest to it as an excellent knife for that usually we think of a hawk bill kind of uh, as the as the appropriate um <clears throat> carpet cutting knife <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, next up uh, today, this is a weird carry today, I have to say, rather aggressive seeming, uh, but not but not actually. Uh, the other thing I carried today was the Voyager XL um, in drop point. It's like a barong. This is their, <clears throat> pardon me, this is their barong version of the XL Voyager. And the Voyagers, I just love. But this one is new because, or, or different in, in a number of ways. First of all, it's a different blade shape. This was, uh, uh, they did the Vaquero, the Tonto, and the 
clip point for a long time. And then they came along and then they did the Chris and then they came along with this one. And this is the first Voyager with jimping. I love it. It's great. The, the jimping is perfect. Uh, the length is perfect. So even if you're up here um, in sort of a choke up position, you have uh, length enough there to stretch out your thumb and use that jimping. This knife is very sharp and it's pretty thin behind the edge because this uh, is about an inch and uh, an eighth the, the length of this uh, flat grind here. And then it's got a pretty uh, big or broad uh, sharpened uh, cutting edge there. So it's it's very slicey. So it's, it's all gunked up. I left the gunk on to show you that I used it. Uh, but the reason I carried this today, I didn't carry it all day, but it was once I got home. I, uh, I had a bunch of divining to do. Our neighbors, uh, we had new neighbors move in. They did a great job of clean, cleaning up their property. But you know how I complain about vines. More of their vines have escaped their property and are coming towards us. So I had a lot to do. Uh, just just uh, mostly Virginia creeper and grapevine. And this just, it was really fun to use this actually. And, and I mostly used it in this choked back position. And you can get good leverage and it stays in your hand nicely with those, with that contouring and the, and the, sh and the um, textured grip, iron cross textured grip in that grivery. So awesome knife and really put it to good use today. Um, yeah, happy, happy to have it. I need to, I need to reacquire the clip point in the Tonto in the XL Voyager because I got rid of it. I, I gave them both away as gifts to two rather large people. Um, for whom this seemed like a normal pocket knife. So I'm, I'm glad that they have it. But now, uh, now that they're making them an OS 10, maybe that's my excuse uh, to reacquire the XL Tonto and uh, clip point. But maybe this time, serrated. All right, last up, uh, sort of an emotional support knife or just a what if I have to cut something in front of the boss knife. Uh, and that was the Rock Wall by Tactile Knives. I love this little knife. Uh, this was their first knife now they have the bear and they have a kitchen knife i can't remember the name of that one but it's uh, named after some county in texas and they also have this in a really cool um, acrylic version called ulum i think U L U M ulum i think now I, I can't remember exactly but Look a couple weeks back in the midweek supplemental or knife news or go to the tactile website, but it's a beautiful uh, semi, it's a, like a translucent amber, um, but still milled. It still has the milling that they do in all of their stuff, like the titanium. It's just sort of see-through, but uh, but it's on the bear, their, their slip joint. Very cool knife. I, I really like the guys over there at tactile. I love their pens. And how they've translated their their knowledge of building high end pens into building really beautiful, really wonderfully engineered, and all made in Texas. I think, except for the stop pin knives, <laughs> or no, they make everything except for the stock pin, uh, the stop pin. But they buy that from a company in Texas. So I like that kind of outfit. I love the knife, uh, small enough to fit in an old five stick juicy fruit pack. So. Um, you know it's EDCable, that's for sure. All right, so that was my pocket check for today. Let me know what you were carrying. Today I had the uh, ZT0630. Uh, I always get these numbers mixed up on the Emersons that they do. I had the Voyager XL Cold Steel in the drop point with the Jimpin. And uh, by the way, these the triad locks can be fidgety. And then last thing I had was the Tactile, uh, tactile Knives Rock Wall um, Flipper. <clears throat> Let me know what you were carrying, and uh, I'd be happy, happy, happy to check it out. Uh, you can call the listener line, too. Either leave, leave a comment below or call the listener line, 724-466-4487. All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to talk some knife life news and state of the collection. Uh, but first, be sure to check us out on Patreon if you want to uh, get interview extras. These are my what I think are our most interesting offerings. Uh, but I also just, up, you also get uh, entered into knife giveaways, you know, all that stuff. But I also just started uploading, um, just uploaded the first video and I'm going to talk to Jim about how to, how to, when to put it up. Uh, but uh, it's, it's more of a, uh, well, a sampling of some of the self-defense stuff I, I do and I train with the guy that I train with. And he shows off some knife techniques, not me on him, but him on me because he's way better. And uh, it's just cool to see. 
So I'm, they're not instructional videos. They're just, hey, check this out. When, when, when we talk about knife combatives, this is the kind of thing we're talking about. All that you can find on Patreon and more. Just go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon or scan the QR code. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit thenifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So we all know that Canada has uh, very restrictive uh, laws on guns and knives. And and uh, by all accounts, uh, the country seems to be going through a bit of a dark phase. Uh, but no doubt Canadians will pull themselves out of that. We, <laughs> we are not ones to speak. Uh, so, you know, as we pull themselves out, uh, ourselves out, it will be nice to see them pull themselves out. But at least we have great knife laws. I mean, among many other things, of course, uh, our knife laws are killer. And now that uh, now that I live in Virginia and Virginia is good to go, thanks to knife rights with automatic knives, <clears throat> I'm feeling very optimistic. Uh, but in Canada, uh, they have a, a harder row to hoe uh, with knife laws. So a company up there called Flippin Tools or Flipped Tool has taken uh the concept of the bottle opener and put it in the concept of the out the front knife. You cannot have an automatic knife in Canada. And if you are jonesing as a knife junkie might for just the fidget and feel act of, of the action of an out the front knife, uh, they offer this bottle opener, this out the front bottle opener flipped tools does. Uh, it's an aluminum chassis and uh, a, a steel a bottle opener, but it comes out just like an out the front knife. And I saw this and it made me feel two things. It made me feel sad. And it also made me feel, well, you know, um, proud of the resilience of humans in general, but also knife junkies to get some satisfaction. I mean, man, if, if all you can get legally is an out the front bottle opener or comb, you know, I'll take it. If I'm living in Canada and that's what I want. I mean, I just sp spent a considerable amount of dough on an out the front knife um, because it just became legal for me. So I can totally understand where flipped tools is coming from or flipped tool. Yeah. Is it tool or tools? Tools. Sorry. So uh, this is their first project and uh, they have a it's a crowdfunding a crowd crowdfunded project. So go check it out. Help these guys out. And uh, I have no doubt that it would be, uh, it's a Kickstarter, that it would be a cool and fun uh, conversation starter at a party. Maybe something you keep on your home bar uh, to, to, you know, when you're entertaining, you want to crack open a beer for someone, you pull this thing out. Uh, I think it uh, it deserves support. And I think, um, man, I, I just hope that uh, there are a couple of Canadians out there who buy this thing uh, which is very a very cool tool, and then cut it down a little and 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 put an edge on that on that uh, bottle opener just to just to thumb the nose at the man. All right, so there we go. That's uh, flipped tools up there in Canada making lemonade out of stupid knife laws. Uh, next up, a very cool uh, knife coming out of. Uh, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna rephrase that and be more specific. A very elegant and beautiful knife. Uh, coming out of Civivi to, to round out July 2022. This thing is, uh, it's called the Citos. And ah, God, it is beautiful. It's got a bayonet blade and a fuller and a, and a quite neutral handle, except that it has a handy little bird's beak uh, at the pommel. And the one that I'm looking at has a, a beautiful, or we're all looking at, has a beautiful uh, uh, micarta handle here it looks kind of like a burlap or a or a dense canvas micarta but look at that blade that blade is is to me stunning something about the combination of the flat with the fuller butting up against that nice long swedge 
it has at, at once it has sort of a traditional slip joint feel, but it also has a sort of bayonet or militaristic sort of feel. So this is uh, hitting me on a couple of my uh, knife obsessions, you know, slip joint and uh, combative. It's a regular uh, flipper. It comes in some dressed up versions here. They have the carbon fiber Cetos with Damascus blade as um, Savivi is doing, has uh, been known to do, you know, that kind of dressed up version. I like that, but I would certainly opt for the other one, the micarta. <clears throat> I love what they're doing. Savivi has kind of become a bit more premium and their prices have gone a bit more, well, a bit higher. Um, I think we just saw the advent of a nearly $200 Savivi or, or way over a hundred bucks uh, with that frame lock. Uh, what, what was that? Oh, the frame lock elementum, I think. No, 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 not frame lock, button lock elementum without the, without the detent. So you have to use the button to open and close. I just, saw uh, a great video on that. It, unfortunately they, they took the hollow grind away. Not sure why they did that, but anyway, this is about the CTOS and I would, uh, I would jump on this. I think I might jump on this. Not literally, of course, that would be bad for uh, my health. But uh, Cetos, I guess the root word to that, uh, it, that is Greek for dolphin. Is that right? Um, so I think that's kind of a, a cool concept, though it doesn't look like a dolphin to me. To me, it looks more like a, well, looks more like a bayonet to me. So there you go. The Civivi bayonet, or if you must, Cetos on its way uh, to, to wrap up July 2022. All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at a what I consider a rather large uh, gents folder that I got that I love, and then favorite folders from favorite brands. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I've been eyeing this knife up for a year, about... It's been in and out of my Amazon cart for about that time, but I couldn't decide on materials and colorway. Sorry for the expression. Uh, but I ended up going with the least expensive option uh, because I've been noodling and vacillating for so long that I decided just to pull the trigger because it's it's sort of this knife has popped back up in the zeitgeist and I've seen it. <laughs> show it. Show it. Here it is. Oh, bad, bad flip. Uh, this is the Artisan Sirius. And this one is in their ARRPM9 uh, proprietary steel. That's a, a powder metallurgy steel and contoured G10. I adore this knife. This thing is very thin and slicey. And it's just got the classic, beautiful lines of a Ray Laconico. Uh, believe it or not, I have never owned a Ray Laconico knife. And um, I, I feel I feel kind of odd about that because I've been admiring them for so long. And I think my excuse has always been, ah, I really like that, but it's small. And and if I'm going to spend Ray Laconico money, I want Ray, Le uh, you know, a bigger size. Well, Ray Laconico does a lot of designs that are well within well within reach with various production companies, Artisan being one of them. I'm going to I'm going to treat you to a view of this with my right hand because my left hand is doesn't seem to be working today uh really really smooth action on this knife of course it's on bearings and you see it didn't drop there and that's because the uh front flipper tab extends pretty far back and i have to get used to with this one kind of lifting up my finger if i want to free drop it if i don't my finger will be in the way you know so I'll just let it drop but look at this blade it even looks beautiful when it's sort when it's open it's got a a, an angled sharpening choil that's sort of evocative of the Strider sharpening choil, which I like uh, angling in like that, but nothing else about this is evocative of, of Strider. Uh, the blade reminds me a little bit of that Cetos we were just looking at. Nice long swedge uh, and then a flat grind. But seeing as it's so thin, that flat grind, um, that I get, high height flat grind is really, really thin behind the edge. This is a very sharp and slicey knife. Uh, you have two, two methods of opening it. You've got the front flipper there and you have the thumb stud, not a very lefty friendly, um, knife. If we, if we care to notice there, there's a one side pocket clip, very nice, uh, titanium sculpted pocket clip with a hidden screw, which I like. 
uh, but it does not go to the other side. The thumb stud is only on the right side. So if you're okay with uh, just using the front flipper I, and carrying it like a right-handed knife, I guess it's fine for lefties. Uh, this also comes in a maroon micarta handle with S35VN, which is quite handsome, uh, but it's also twice the price of this, and I wasn't sure if this was going to be something uh, that I was going to, that was worth the, that money for me. So I am happy with this one. And uh, I have been flirting with the idea of upgrading materials, but only because I like the look of the uh, maroon and the black blade and the micarta, but that's not a good enough reason. So I, I will have to move along because there are other things uh, I would like that are in the same $55 price range uh, that I'd like to check out. So I like that little brass pivot collar, by the way. Very nice, classy touch. Very nice G10. I've kind of fallen out of love with G10, but uh, when it's contoured like this, it's so nice. I guess I just have a lot of uh, peel ply grippy G10 in my collection. And I'm kind of I'm kind of over it a little bit. All right, so let's talk about some of these folders. Uh, this is favorite folders from favorite brands. Um, this was uh, actually a video I realized uh, I did not come up with this concept. I mean, I came up with my version of it, but this is something that uh, uh, Stasa23 did. And I was like, yeah, that's a, that, that is a great idea, so I'm going to do it. Uh, but, but for me, my stipulation is I have to have at least four knives from this brand in a sub-collection. And I am ruling out any sentimental value. Uh, I'll give you a for instance. Uh, with Emerson Knives, uh, by far the sentimental value goes to the Emerson Commander, which I got, you know, 22 years ago. I would take that for sentimental value. But that's not the one I chose for this. This is just knives that are favorite uh, from that brand. Okay, first up, Kaiser. I've been re-loving Kaiser again. I used to have a bunch of them, sold them off to get other things years ago. and um, But I've been reacquiring them. And I have four Kaisers. I have the Roach. I have the... Uh, um, uh, well, it doesn't matter what I have. But my favorite out of all of them, because I can't remember what the one is called. The, uh, the It's made by... Anyway, the one that is my favorite from Kaiser is a very unique one. It comes from a designer I love, Dirk Pinkerton. Uh, this is the Kaiser Inversion, a knife you don't hear much about because it's weird looking and it's a Pickhall style folder. Uh, this is optimized for um, uh, tip down, edge in, fighting use. That's what this is designed for. But it is oh so valuable as a, a utility knife. Uh, it is actually quite comfortable to use in this grip you know, with your thumb up here and you have a little space there, but it feels, it feels really good. Actually, this is a, an excellent knife in this grip. And I think it does not get, uh, it did not get a lot of attention because it's just sort of odd looking. You look at it and it, it, it seems like, uh, things are cattywampus or backwards. Um, but they aren't, and it works great as a traditional knife and it works great as a, uh, Pical style knife. You've got terraced uh, scales here of um, titanium, a little bit of weight relief. Oh, no, no, negative, no weight relief. And uh, a nice pocket clip. You can flip it using this tiny little nubbin that comes off of the tang. Like that a lot. I love really low profile yet traditionally placed flippers. And then it comes with two different thumb plates, one that is more flat, and then this one in brass, which is canted up uh, so that you can wave it out of your pocket and, and bring it to bear as a weapon quickly, if that's what you're getting this for. And that's what this is for. You know, that's where the clip is placed. It's so that when you pull this thing out like this, this snags on your pocket, and then you just swivel it into your hand and you have a Pakal style uh, knife in S35VN and titanium ready to go. Uh, theoretically. So very cool knife. I uh, really like the Kaiser inversion. And uh, of my Kaisers, that is my favorite. Uh, next up is the Concept brand. And Concept is, I don't want to say an offshoot from Kaiser because that's incorrect. They, Con, uh, Concept is a company formed by people once with Kaiser. 
So they brought all of their manufacturing and engineering and design prowess, and not all of it, obviously, but they brought it from Kaiser with them and started Concept. And I love Concept knives. As a matter of fact, I have the bulldozer. I want to get the the bulldozer in D two, and um, and uh, tan micarta. Anyone have that? Anyone like it? I know a lot of people do. So I want to get I want to get that one. Nice uh, Warren Cliff, but with a point. All right, but of the ones that I have, my favorite is the K Max Rom designed Preta Two. Love this thing. The Preta Two Preta Two means ready for anything in French, and uh, it is ready for anything. Really like this, a 3.6 inch blade. It comes in a, this clip point or it comes in a um, Umnumzan-esque Tonto. I have that in the titanium version, but I have to say I the titanium version is absolute butter. It is beautiful, beautifully done. The one thing is uh, the way the lock is set up. I have a hard time using the, the thumb studs on that knife, but on this knife, I do not. And uh, the flipping action is awesome and also the fuller action is awesome. My, It's my left hand that is not. Hang on. There we go. Fuller action is awesome on this thing. When I talked fullers on the show last week, uh, this, was a, this was a big star because hmm, they just did it right. They put it in the right place, made it the right uh, depth. But just a beautiful knife by K. Maxrom, French designer. Uh, I like him a lot. Uh, Jonathan Renaudin. Uh, he does these double peaked knives that I like so much. You look at the spine, you got those two peaks, kind of like a, a Mac V Sog Bowie, classic from the Vietnam era. Um, does that on the Tonto also. And uh, with 154 CM and great blade geometry, this is an awesome, awesome knife. Um, it feels like, you know, it's like a $75 knife or $80 knife, and it feels much more premium. Uh, this thing is great. I highly recommend this knife. It also comes uh, with black micarta and a blue pivot collar and a stone washed black blade. All right. Next up is the Finch Knife Company. They have a lot of really great offerings. And at this point, they have, I think, exactly twice the amount out than what I have. So I have some catching up to do. I have no... Um, no goals now to have a full flock, as they say, of Finch knives. There are a few that I feel are somewhat redundant in design, at least for my use. Um, but most of them, most of them are just awesome. Uh, like the Chernobyl Ant. I keep thinking about that. I got to get that knife. The Chernobyl Ant is, is sweet. But the, uh, my favorite uh, of, of the Finch knives that I have or don't have uh, so far um, is the Holiday. Uh, designed. Uh, for or or with keeping in mind uh spencer spencer of spencer and steve the guys who run the company um spencer designed this with his father in mind who loved uh, loves uh hopefully loves and not loved but the old west and doc holiday as a historical figure so this is holiday with two l's as in doc it's a bolster lock uh oh man so nicely done um these are made by QSP knives, or this one was. I'm not sure if they are still making uh, the current finches. I'm not. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but a bolster lock that's steel, a steel bolster lock, just so nicely done. Um, the the action is outstanding. Uh, it's 154 cm blade steel. I think that's all of their blades do that. Are 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 out of that. Uh, they have this awesome flipper tab on most of them where it it comes up just a little bit like that but you get great purchase with the jimping and great action and then you get a great little inverse choil it's a it's like a, a instead of going in like a choil it pops out like a platform but it's nicely jimped and it's a great place to put your finger if you need this knife if you need to get a little bit closer to that cutting edge uh, uh this is a looker too this is in obviously you can see green micarta and it's got that glow-in-the-dark luminescent uh, badge in the middle with the F. Just a great knife, a great blade. Of course, I, I think of this as a, as a great crossover. Of all my finches, if I needed to use it uh, in a defensive situation, this is the one I would want because it flips around perfectly into that Pakal style. Uh, and, and it has a perfectly neutral grip based on the doctor's knife. You can see that flat end based on the traditional doctor's knife with the parallel lines 
uh, dorsal and, and pectoral and uh, with the flat top here. So perfect for any grip, really perfect for any grip. So if you needed to flex this into defensive, it would work great. This is the Finch Holiday and Man Alive. Do I think their knives are charming and capable? Next up, speaking of capable, is Microtech. I have four Microtechs and they're all cool. They're all super cool, but nothing, nothing will will replace this in 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 my heart. This is the Elite, uh, the SOCOM Elite. This one was made in 2012, March of 2012. March, the worst month of the year, probably March or February, just the doldrums, winter doldrums. When things seem their bleakest, well, it's always darkest before the dawn. And that's when this was made, bringing hope to the world of cutlery. All right. This is my car knife. I talk about it a lot. Not my car knife, like it lives in my car. Uh, more aptly, this is my um, road trip knife. And it became that early on because it was my first knife with a um, glass breaker on it. And I figured I should have it with me, you know, when we're going on a road trip in case I have to break the glass. And it's become tradition. Nice and light, but you got a four inch blade, probably the most beautiful Tonto blade out there, in my opinion, the old school, or I should say, I think it was up until about 2015, they were making the Tontos like this, and then they changed it to what they look like now, which is also cool. But to me, this is, this is the most beautiful. So nice with that swedge and the clip point or the drop point there. Really nice knife. This thing is very sharp and very capable and very sturdy and very strong. And uh, this this screw here up at the top, right where, uh, so this ha this uses thumb stud slash blade stops, and it comes up against a flat portion of aluminum where these two pieces meet. And then there's a screw not too far behind. Um, this screw here is very important. Uh, Stasa did a some really hard testings with his Reich made Bravo, SOCOM Bravo, and he did some really hard tests and noticed that without the screw there, because they don't have a screw this far forward, without the screw there, it started to um, loosen up right in this area when he was doing some, I mean, albeit some, some really or admittedly crazy testing, like stuff you probably wouldn't use your knife for, but it just goes to show that sometimes the, the, the genuine article is the way to go. And I'm not saying the Bravo is not the genuine article, but it's not made by Microtech. So um, maybe, just maybe, if Microtech made that, they'd put a screw there. I don't know. Any case, uh, this one has the uh, carbon fiber and uh, the tan handle. And I love the aluminum jimping. I love the way they mill the jimping uh, in aluminum. Both Microtech and Protech are awesome at it. Okay, so that's my favorite of the Microtech. That's the SOCOM Elite. What about Rick Hinderer knives, eh, you say? Well, they're all awesome, of course. They're all awesome. But of the four that I have, and incidentally of all of them, my favorite is the XM24 because it is the big XM. I love the XM18 um, concept and shape but I love how it is expressed fully in the four inch bladed version. These are just incredible. I have two XM24s, both uh, older uh, without the triway pivot. This one does not need it. My other one would benefit from it, definitely. Uh, so I have an old Bowie from, I guess, their first run of Bowies. It does not have spectacular action, but it is, that one is a spectacular knife. But to me, the Warncliffe blade on the XM24 is is just, I just like to look at it. Look at that. I love to look at it. And this is a great user. I actually like using this better than my Warncliffe XM18, which is a little bit thicker behind the edge. This one, I believe, seeing as it has a broader blade, um, is a little bit thinner back there. The weight of the blade makes it snap out. Like this is a very well-tuned pre-triway pivot hinderer. And it just came that way. So very nice, very nice knife. Um, I do like the the choil on hinderers. I've decided I like the choil better than no choil. Definitely on the uh, Warncliffe, that is the case. My 18 Warncliffe uh, is a no choil exclusive from DLT. 
And though it's nice to have that extra eighth of an inch of cutting edge, it's also nice to have the uh, the the finger choil also act as the sharpening choil. You can see how it clears that um, thumb stud. If you were to bring a stone up here, you wouldn't run into that thumb stud, which was an issue uh, when sharpening my other, my uh, no choil Warncliffe with a stone. Uh, Jared Neve had some issues getting at the very uh, end of the knife because he was bumping, you know, he would have to bump into that uh, thumb stud. So he had to give it a more oblique angle. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's your lesson. Choil on the Warren Cliff uh, hinderers. Okay, next up, one that I have quite a bit of knives from and that I love, uh, off-grid knives. This is, I think, my favorite right now. My current favorite. It, it, it definitely cycles. Uh, but this is so awesome. This is from their Elite Series a premium lineup with um, titanium handles and M390 blade steel and uh, some of the finest manufacturing in the world from Best Tech. All of the off-grid knives are now made with Best Tech. They used to do the Elite series like this and the Scorpion with Wii knives, uh, but Kerry Orifice, the designer and proprietor of off-grid knives, was so impressed with the builds, build quality and working with Best Tech on his uh, regular lines, his, you know, most of his knives with G10 and D2 and 14C and such, uh, that he decided to move his Elite series over here. And uh, man, I'm, you know, I think it was a great choice. They make such awesome knives. Best Tech is, uh, it's no secret, probably my favorite OEM just due to their range. They have a bunch of knives from in-house designs and then they do some of the most spectacular oem work for some of the best designers and makers uh this one the titanium is is uh has that nice golf ball pocking texture in there but on both sides and it feels so good in hand and it offers great gription without being aggressive or uncomfortable it just it's like a massage on your hand um, the action is stupendous. It's on uh, bearings, as you would expect. And it rockets out and drops, even though it's a slightly uh, sub... Oh, wait, is it sub three inch or just... Yeah, it's just a... Oh, I'm sorry. It's about three and a quarter inches. So uh, great action with that. I like that sort of traditional file work jimping on top. It does give you some uh, tactile feedback, I'd say. Um, and a little bit of grip. So this is just like the Enforcer, the Enforcer XL and the Enforcer in terms of its profile, but it's slightly pared down from the Enforcer EDC and radically pared down from the XL, obviously. But it's a premium knife that feels premium and it's small. Uh, and man, I love this knife. Uh, the Off-Grid Knives Black Mamba version 2. Great pocket clip. All of the new Off-Grid Knives have the inset pocket clip with the flat screws he listened and redesigned and when once he sold off all of his version ones he he had the manufacturer start pocketing out for the pocket scale or for the pocket clip and add flat screws okay next up civivi i have i have a growing civivi collection i really like them i like them better than we and uh, i am liking the look of some of the send cuts coming out now too but civivi's just man they, they make some really awesome knives and this is going back to one of their very first models. This is the Praxis. Got this not too long ago. And uh, man, I love it. I carry it quite a bit. This is the Praxis in uh, Dark Wash 14C 28N. Excuse me, Blade Steel. Oh, no, no, no. This is 9. I take it back. This is 9CR, uh, which is also really good steel. Very thin behind the edge. Black Wash. It's already a thin... Quite a thin blade stock, but also quite a broad blade with a very high height uh, flat grind. So it is it is like a laser beam. And then I have beautiful rosewood. Uh, looks very nice. Feels really good and evocative of a guitar. That's, a, that's a, a wood that's frequently used on fretboards. It's either maple or rosewood and fretboards of guitars, that is. And I just love the way it looks. Always have. Uh, been a rosewood fan so uh this knife the praxis if you don't have it it took me years and years to get it and uh you know me late adopter uh but it's been coming up recently people have been 
rehashing the praxis and talking about how even though Civivi has a million mod, this is still one of their best. And it's a big boy. And uh, but svelte and thin and slicey and just awesome. Also reminds me of a Filipino barong sword. So it has that going for it. Next up, Boker knives. Uh, when I first started um, collecting bokers and or not collecting bokers, when I first bought my first boker and when I was, you know, kind of first watching uh, YouTube videos about knives, boker was having some issues with their uh, quality control, but they cleaned that up post haste. You know, the Germans, they got right on it. And uh, I have never had an issue with a boker knife. I, I have only been impressed by them. But my favorite of the four that I have, uh, even though one of them has much greater sentimental value because I was carrying it when my second daughter was born, uh, but my favorite is the Boker Squail. It's probably no mystery. Uh, I talk about the Squail and Charles Marlowe in general as my grail folder, uh, folding knives. I love Charles Marlowe's knives. If you don't know who he is, look him up on Instagram. His stuff is outrageously beautiful. Uh, he doesn't make many knives i think i think he's he labors over them and um they are quite expensive so if you want a charles marlowe your best option is uh without getting one and waiting for one and spending uh, the money on one or trying to find one on the secondary is to go to boker they used to have two knives by him i think they still do but but i'm not sure what the they replaced one of them the bull pup which was a small clip point kind of set up exactly like this which i regret not getting now and can't get it now um and then i believe they came out with something else to replace that but a little lower end and a little less interesting but still designed by him this and the bullpup were uh directly licensed versions of custom knives i think the third one that replaced the bullpup was a design he did exclusively uh, for boker in any case, this one, as you can see, is just stunningly beautiful. It looks like an Italian racing boat from the 60s uh, to me. And uh, it's got a beautifully hollow ground recurve drop point blade with an, with an awesome opening hole and um, uh, really great thumb ramp here. Awesome hydraulic action on the washers here. You can flip it open or you can just slow roll it nicely. Uh, those are titanium. Uh, contoured titanium bolsters here and this is contoured G g10 at the time i got it you could get contoured green micarta but it only came tipped down and i was like man that's why why would you do that why would you do that to me that's just harsh uh and then they changed it to tip up tip down but only offered it with black g10 as a, again why you know why a uh, four inch blade just outstanding that that blade is uh vg10 VG10. So that's the Boker Squail, my favorite from Boker Knives. Uh, next up, Emerson. We were talking before, or I was talking before, about how um, sentimentality doesn't come into it. This one does have a bit of sentimental value anyway, but it's always been probably my favorite uh, uh, pocket knife Bowie design and my favorite Emerson probably. Uh, it's hard to say, <laughs> but uh, until I figure that out, I will say it's the CQC 13. Just a beautiful Bowie shape, an incredible looking and feeling handle. With that bird's beak at the end. You are just, your hand is encapsulated in there. Fits my medium sized hand beautifully, but I've also seen it in large hands, like, like vastly larger hands, and it fits comfortably there too and nestles in there and locks in and then if you have it in reverse you've got a great place for the thumb i'm going to use my right hand for a sec great great setup for the thumb and then the star of the show of course is that is that beautifully upswept curved um bowie blade this thing just it it's a classic emerson but it also just looks like a classic style bowie to me when i bought this the only thing i could find it was a very hard knife to find and uh you know uh, Emerson's are catch as catch can. They don't make all of their models all at once. And the, the only one I could find was serrated. Uh, but I still, it doesn't, doesn't bother me. doesn't bother me. Some knives I'm like, God, that's a buzzkill to have serrations, but it's cool on this one. It's one of two of my Emerson's to have serrations on. And, uh, 
though I usually prefer fully serrated to to 50 50. Um, it, it works on this one. Very cool knife and just looks mean and fits. You know, there's a there's there's got to be a sort of Fibonacci sequence for Bowie's and there's no uh, you know, this would fit it. Uh, the 110 would fit it. The uh, Recon 1 Bowie would fit it just like perfect Bowie dimensions and shaping. Okay, I'm going to slide these down so I can get the last two on the board. Uh, two more. Spider-Co. Uh, man, that's a hard one. Uh, also, Spider-Co. Because I have a lot of sentimental Spider-Cos. So it's good that I didn't bring that in. I also have something that I also am not including. Um, oh, that's not true. I was going to say nothing customized. But that last CQC-13 has customized scales. Anyway, uh, it is the Yojumbo. I vacillated between this and the Yojimbo, but the four inch blade wins out. Even though I think the Yojimbo is a more elegant and graceful looking design, they both feel great in hand and they both perform amazingly. This one, uh, here's the caveat for they both feel great in hand. They both feel great in hand now because I um, sanded down the partition, uh, that little partitioned peak rise, this one, but in the center of the grip. I don't like two finger partitions for for your hands on grips like that. So I got rid of it and it feels much better. Uh, the liner does not go up into that, which is lucky. So I didn't have to sand or, or alter the metal or expose the liner or anything like that. So just a matter of taking that hump down. And the same thing here uh, at the tail end with the G10, if you wanted it to go all the way straight back like that, uh, like I've seen um, Hilltop do. He, man, he does an awesome, BJ Hill does an awesome job on uh, customizing your jumbos. Uh, but for me, I like having that little bit there just to just to bracket my hand in and, and be a little um, indexer for where my hand is on the blade. Really awesome four inch hollow ground Warncliffe blade. It's all action. Um, it's just a pretty pretty capable knife for self-defense i you could use this as a as a utility knife and that hollow grind is thin but not so thin that you have to worry too much about it if you're going to use it as a utility knife but if you you know there are probably others that might be uh better like the main street um by concept that has a blade that looks like that but it's flat ground and just a little bit more robust behind the tip <laughs> All right, last up, Cold Steel, my favorite, or one of my favorites, but I guess over a lifetime, you know, they say, well, they say, Jordan Peterson says, we, like each individual, is a community of people across time. And uh, past Bob and future Bob and present Bob loves Cold Steel. Past Bob would say, Cold Steel is my very favorite brand. Present Bob would say, it's hard to, it's hard to say. But my favorite knife from this brand is this right here and my favorite folder i should say the espada the espada series and the espada large there is a medium a large and of course the seven and a half inch bladed xl it comes in full dress like this with aluminum bolsters and contoured polished g10 and s35 vn blade steel or it comes in a g10 version with aus 10. Uh, either way they're incredible because to me they are well not to me they are incredible and the reason is they are modeled after my favorite folding knife from history the spanish navaja a kind of horn handled shaped knife with a big clip point blade and a ratchet ratcheted the traditional ones had a ratcheted lock so there was a gear pattern fashioned into the tang of the blade uh, in a in a semicircular shape and then a, t a tab up here that could lock it in to each gear so when you open it it ratcheted and then <clears throat> it locked open and it had a ring and you pull the ring or it has a little tab that you lift up and you can disengage it uh the navaja was created in the wake of a moratorium on carrying swords civilians carrying swords and uh you know if those passionate La latin tempers flared up and someone's honor was besmirched and you had to you know, fight for your honor or call someone out or defend yourself in the street, whatever it was, you pulled out your Navaja because you no longer carried a sword. 
So they started making Navajas ridiculously large, including uh, the scale of the XL cold steel. That That is not just a funny thing or, or a, an interesting thing. They really did make Navajas the sizes of short swords because uh, they, they wanted to maximize what they could get out of their folders since they couldn't use the sword. But when you look at this thing, beautiful, absolutely elegant uh, uh, blade shape, and then you uh, and blade handle. The handle uh, gives you multiple uh, ways to grip it. If you're using this in a utility fashion, you can come all the way up here. Uh, this is the standard grip here for just you know Jason Borning or 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 dueling, <laughs> and then you can move back here and use this uh, this back sub tang thing and or sub hilt. You can even come as far back as here and use it in a sort of chopping, slashing motion because your fingers are held in with this sort of trigger-like shape. Of course, I picked this one because I like the I like the bolsters and the polish and the and the look of it. It it reminds me of something from history that you would actually see. Imagine that G10 is just buffalo horn or something like that so there it is ladies and gentlemen that's one favorite folder from my favorite brands and of course it has to be from a sub collection of four or more i'm going to rattle rattle them off here uh, from left to right you have the the kaiser inversion the concept preda 2 in uh, micarta you have the finch holiday microtech socom elite hinderer xm18 warncliffe Black Mamba version two from Off Grid Knives, the Civivi Praxis, the Boger Squale, the Emerson CQC 13, the Yo Jumbo by Spider Co., and the large Espada full dress from Cold Steel Knives. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tripping, tripping down that little uh, uh, lane of fun with me and uh, enjoying uh, these knives. What, what are your favorite knives from your favorite sub collections or favorite brands? Uh, I, I know that there are one or two here that weren't represented. Uh, ZT, um, I have five ZTs. I didn't, I didn't choose them. I, I kind of feel, and I hate to say this, but like they're not quite as relevant uh, at this moment. Uh, you know, they were once and future kings, but currently, uh, I, so I just didn't, wasn't compelled to, to show off my favorite and wasn't compelled to try and figure out a favorite. I love them all. Uh, please join us on Sunday for Doug Ritter. He joins us on uh, the Knife Junkie podcast interview show on Sunday. And we talk about all the latest uh, knife news. We talk a lot about Virginia, naturally, because he just helped change the law. Helped. He just had the law changed here through his efforts and uh, the people he works with and knife rights. And uh, we also talk about... Um, uh, the uh, tail end bonus, um, the, the, the tail end drawing for the ultimate steal, the, the contest where you can choose your prize. Uh, once, once, you give a, once you give a little money, you're eligible for a prize. You get to choose it. They have amazing stuff. And boy, now more than ever with, uh, with at least the quoted 9.1% uh, inflation, they need money now more than ever to help fight for our rights. Our, uh, our our knife rights. All right. And then also be sure to uh, download the podcast to the app so you can listen when you're doing what you got to do, but you're actually thinking about knives. Okay. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, please, I implore you don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast